with me, please, to 2 Chronicles 32. I don't want to keep you long, man. But this is the battle that they went through, Hezekiah, after he decided to follow Jesus. You remember that song, I decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. It says, no turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. When well, you decide to follow Jesus, 2 Chronicles chapter 32. I might have missed that one ago. When you get there, say amen. 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 Have you decided to follow Jesus? Amen. amen. Well, good, because he's trying to prepare you for something. And the ribbon fan is in his hand. And he's cranking that fire up. <coughs> After these things and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came. Uh oh, there's that king of Assyria. There's the Antichrist spirit that's been in many kings, many leaders, that is in our leader now. Here he come. Came and entered into Judah and encamped against the fenced cities and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty man to stop the waters of the fountains, which were without the city, and they did help him. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Mm -mm -mm. Sometimes we need to stop the fountains of water in our life. Jesus said the prince of this world comes in John 14, 30. He says, Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world comes and has nothing in me. He has no hold on me is what the NIV says. There are things in our life that we must stop. We must stop those waters when we're under attack. We must continue to stop the sin in our life and let nothing be found in us because when an evil one comes, he's looking for an open door to get into your life. And that's what Hezekiah did. He said, look, I'm not giving this guy no place. Amen. We're not going to feed this guy. We're not going to quench his thirst. We're going to cut them waters off in the physical so when they come and surround, they won't have nothing to drink so they can attack us. We're not going to fund their attack on us. Mm -hmm. Y'all get that? Amen. <laughs> Sometimes we are funding the attack of the enemy and we're helping him by certain things we're doing in our own life. Hello, I feel the Holy Ghost yeah. now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Break it! There, there, there are times that, that there are little bit things in our lives that we just won't give up. Oh, I love Jesus. He knows my heart. But I'm not giving this thing up. i got to keep my eyes on this thing. Woo, it feels good. And that right there is some waters that we need to stop up. Because when that enemy comes, he's going to take that inroad that you've got, that you know in your heart that is wrong, and he's going to attack you with it. He's going to enter in by it. Whatever it may be. That's why when the altar call comes, when the invitation comes at the end of a service, if you still have it in many churches these days, if you still have it, but when that invitation comes, praise God, that's when you give your heart and say, Lord, I've got this problem. I've got these waters in my life that the enemy's using to attack me with. Lord, please help me, whatever it may be. It could be anger. It could be a foul mouth. It could be addiction. It could be bitterness. It could be unforgiveness. It could be anything. It could be drugs. Those things right there are the waters that Hezekiah said. We put an end to that. Because he's coming. Y'all, Satan is wroth. It says in Revelation chapter 12 that his, he is wroth. He's come down to us because he knows his time is short. Since Jesus has went to the cross, many people wait for that to happen in the future. Theologians have surmised and, and made, mistakenly taught that that's going to happen in the future. That Satan has not come down yet. That is going to happen in, through the tribulation period. But if you read chapter 12 of Revelation, you'll find out since the cross, since what Jesus paid for, then Satan was cast out of heaven. Amen. Amen. Don't listen to theologians over God's word. That's a high place. Yes. Hello. Don't listen to false doctrine in churches over God's word. That's a high place. Amen. It's got to come down. He's here on the earth, and his time is short. You said we had 2,000 years. 
Huh. But in the spirit world, a day is like a thousand years, mm -hmm. and a thousand years is like a day. Read Peter. Mm -hmm. Hello. So he knows his time is short. And now his time is even shorter. Yep. So guess what he's doing? He's playing for peace. <laughs> he's coming after you, and he's coming after me. We've got power over. Jesus said, Behold, I've given you all power over you. Some of us don't know it. And he said, Even though you've got power over the enemy, you got power to walk, he's got no power over you. If you've got those waters running, he's going to come in through that door and he's going to eat your lunch and pop the bag. He's going to grab you in a headlock because he's got you. He's found something in you, like Jesus said, he can find nothing in me. The prince of this world is Satan. It wasn't Judas. It was Satan in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Satan was coming to have his heyday. Well, that was at the end of Jesus' ministry on earth. Well, guess what? The church age is wrapping up. Amen. And as the church age is wrapping up, guess what's happening? The prince of this world is coming. And guess who he's coming after? We are what? The body of who? Christ. We're the body of Christ. Who do you think he's coming after? Those who really are Christians in the body of Christ. And he's trying to find something in you that he can move in and tear your mind up and tear your life apart. That's why you need sermons like this. To prepare and understand how to use your weapon, know those scriptures, and really, and get into the Word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. His greatest music is, his greatest inspiration is, let me tell you, if you don't ever get in the Word of God, you don't have no power. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You must get in the Word of God and understand how to use this weapon. Because this right here protects you. The Word anoints you. The Word supplies your every need. The Word feeds you. The Word quenches that thirst inside of your spirit. That if you don't get that thirst quenched in your own spirit, you're going to run somewhere else to try to quench that hole and that thirst inside besides God's Word. And you're going to wind up in trouble. There's only one who can quench the thirst. And he said at the woman at the well, he told her, he said, those who come to me for this living water shall not thirst again. But if you go after anything else, you're going to thirst. Ooh, let me keep on reading. Let's get good. Verse 5. Also he strengthened himself and built up all the wall that was broken and raised it up to the towers and another wall without and repaired Milo in the city of David and made darts and shields in abundance. <laughs> well, we understand the weapons of our warfare 